Hey everybody, Susan Rashawn here, The Techie Mentor. Just a big thank you for listening to this podcast, the virtual assistant tips, tricks, and advice channel where I share all things virtual assistant every week with no fluff, just the stuff that gets results. Hello my friends and welcome to this week's episode. Today's topic is having a website for your VA business. And the reason that you should have a website is because if you want to work with professionals and you want to charge premium rates, then you want to be perceived as a professional because it's all about what's called perceived value. Professionals want to work with other professionals. And just because of the way the VA industry has kind of morphed over the years, there's a lot more scammers and spammers in our industry than was before. So clients are looking for established VAs that have a presence, which includes a website. Now, I know for a lot of people, they're like, oh my God, a website. I don't know what to put on a website. You don't need a full blown website. You can have a one page website that is well done, simple, clear, and focused on what you offer your clients. And then as your business grows and evolves, you can create a bigger website. So you don't need to blog, right? All you need is almost like your calling card that says, hey, here's how I can help you. Here's a little bit about me. Now there are lots of different tools that you can use to do a free website. So you don't even have to pay for a website when you're starting. You can do Wix, you can do Weebly, you can even do Squarespace. I am a huge advocate for WordPress. And WordPress.com actually is a free hosting site where you can have your own free WordPress website. And I highly recommend learning WordPress. It may have a steeper learning curve, which can deter many of you, but it is a very in-demand skill set that you can write your own ticket for. So if you're interested in websites, it is something I highly recommend that you look at starting with WordPress. Now, here's the beauty of websites. If you learn one website builder, you can pretty much learn another because you understand the fundamentals. So first off, what you're gonna need to do is figure out what tool you're gonna use. You know, again, Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, and WordPress.com free. So you can start with a free version just to get yourself started. So if you're bootstrapping and you don't have the money to buy, you know, a domain name and pay for hosting, that's fine. Start with free and then work your way up. A a one page website that's free is still better than no website at all. Okay, remember, you wanna work with professionals, it's all about perceived value. They perceive that you're a professional if you have more assets when it comes to your online presence, which a website is really the door to your business. So now let's talk about what you need on a one-page website. It can be very simple, so you don't have to overthink this. And one of the things that I have found helpful for myself, if you're stuck when it comes to trying to figure out what to write, I get ideas off of um, AI. So I know that AI can be a sore subject for, for many people, but I use it because I can't start with a blank sheet of paper. I will ask it for ideas on what to say and so then I can take what it spits out and use that and put it in my own voice. So I use chat GPT which is free but there's a ton of different ones out there. So you can try what works best for you. So if you're afraid of what to write or you need ideas, you know AI can really help you with ideas. To me it's an idea generation tool especially if you're afraid of a blank sheet of paper like me. Okay, so let's go back to what are the components of a one-page website. First off, an introduction. So at the very top, you want to have a brief introduction, maybe a one-liner that summarizes who you are and what you do. I know, easier said than done. But you could simply say, for instance, if you're um, somebody who offers, let's just use WordPress, um, WordPress services, you could basically say, um, you know, hey, I'm Susan Rashawn. I, I'm a WordPress designer that works with business coaches. That could be your introduction. It could be that simple. So it can be what you do and who you do it for. So it could be copywriter for business coaches. It could be um, a customer service for yoga studios. So think of it that way. So put together what you do and who you do it for and use that to summarize for a introduction. And then the about section. Now this is where you can, you know, I don't want to say go crazy, but you can share as much as you feel comfortable with. So it's about getting to know you a little bit better. So if you have qualifications, make sure you list those. Any relevant training, experience, expertise, 
that can back up the services that you offer, you're going to want to talk about them. But you can also be personal. You can tell them, you know, if you're married, if you have kids, if you love pets, um, you know, what are your hobbies? This is where you can go any direction that you want to go. You can keep it very short and sweet or you can add more to it. And the beautiful thing about uh, most of these free websites is they have sections that you can add. So you can section out your website. So you can have introduction, you can have about. Under about, you can do your services. So these are the services that you offer, whatever they might be, you know. And I would group like services together. So if you do administrative support, you know, I would do, you know, calendar management and then inbox management and then you know, customer service, for instance. Social media management, I would go into more detail as exactly what kind of, of uh, work you do because social media management is kind of like VA. It's, it's a broad term. Um, copywriting, you know, WordPress, whatever it is, however you work, whatever you offer, you would put it under your services section. And then if you have testimonials, now I know if you're just getting started and you've not worked with clients, you may not have testimonials, but you can get testimonials from people who can speak to your character and your work ethic, and you can use those. So they can be um, people that you've worked with before in any capacity. And this really helps build trust and credibility. And as you start to get clients, one of the things you're going to want to do is get testimonials. But if you don't have those from clients, grab them from coworkers or even bosses you've had in the past that can speak to your character and your work ethic. And then you're going to want to have a contact form. And this is where it's a call to action that gives them next steps. Never assume they know what to do. So basically, you're just reading almost, I don't want to say like a resume, but it's introduction, who you are, what you do. Here's an about, tells you a little bit more about me, maybe my experience, my qualifications, my expertise, any relevant trainings. Here's what I offer. Here's what people have said about me. And if you don't have testimonials, don't worry about it. Just leave it out for now. You can always add those later. And then contact. How do they contact you? If I want to reach out to you to find out more, because maybe they found you on Facebook and then they're looking at your website. And now they actually want to talk to you. What do they have to do? It could be a button. It could be an email address. It can be whatever you need it to be however you want them to contact you, but it needs to be clear on what they do. Now, if you also have the type of service that you can um, provide samples of your work, you could also put a section on there for a portfolio. Now, here's the thing. It's not every type of service can have a portfolio. If you do back-end stuff for people, which, you know, you do tech stuff for people, you can't share that. Um, because a lot of it is proprietary and private or confidential to clients. Now, if you build websites, you could certainly show the front end of the website, but you can't show the back end. If you write copy, um, so realize that I know a lot of people go, oh, get a portfolio. Well, it depends on what you do. Not everything can be in a portfolio. But if you have visual type work that you can share, you could also do a portfolio. But remember, at the end of the day, it's important to keep it simple, clear, and focused. So make sure that it speaks to who you are, what you do, and most important, how do they contact you? And then you're going to use that as your calling card. So when you connect with people or when you're networking, let them know that you have a website because that's going to make a difference and it will help you stand out, right? So hopefully you have found this helpful. If you have a website, great. If you're working on one, great. Um, feel free to leave in the comments. I'd love to see your website. Feel free to leave a link. Um, I will read and comment to each and every one. Uh, and last but not least, if you want some more information about personal branding, be sure to check out that episode. I'll put the, the link to it in the show notes. So thanks for listening as always, and I'll see you guys next week.